Doctor, we've talked about stress, I think, in the past, but can you explain, we all feel it probably every single day to some degree, what is that doing? How does our body respond to that when we're in the middle of those situations? Well, we were programmed genetically to be able to fight or flee from something mm -hmm. really adverse. And the biological mobilization to do that is humongous. I mean, it's enough for us to run or fight a, a saber-toothed tiger. Mm -hmm. Women have been known to lift up cars off their children. Mm -hmm. I mean, the juices that are involved, they mobilize our heart, our circulation, our muscles. They're beautiful. It's an amazing response. And the issue is that that same response will be triggered even if the threat isn't imminent, even if it's something in our mind or our emotions. The exact same biological response is triggered. And if you do that day in and day out, for all kinds of reasons, only a small fraction of which are really imminent concerns that need mm -hmm. to be addressed, we just, when we're young, we push out a lot of juices to be able to do that. And then as time goes on, we can't keep up with that. So one of the hallmarks of growing older happens to be an abnormal thing called the overall depletion of all our power juices. All of our hormones, all of our neurotransmitters are involved in that, that mobilization. It's why people look old and are, are low in energy and are tired. And, you know, the very things we like the least about aging are primarily driven by that stress response. There's other factors, as you know so well, that relate to health. Mm -hmm. But the loss of those power juices by the decline of the ability for the adrenal glands, the gonads, the thyroid, to keep putting them out at the mm -hmm. levels we're demanding of them, well, we pay for it by really low levels. And one of the things that I've done so much of in my career is do state-of-the-art testing of hormone levels, and neurotransmitter levels. And I can tell you about older people, their numbers are low. I mean, astoundingly low. Sometimes I look at them, I wonder, how are they walking mm -hmm. and talking? <laughs> <laughs> so is it a case of some of those organs that produce those, those power juices, like you mentioned, just getting overworked? Well, yes, exactly. I mean, they just can't keep up with the demand. You know, just like when you're 12 and 24, you can run fast and mm -hmm. jump high. And then why can't you do that at 60 and 80? Because you don't have the muscle strength. You don't have the, the metabolism to be able to produce the energy to do that. We just decline as the mileage increases. It doesn't have to. The most fascinating thing about it is that it's primarily a dysfunctional response to our own thoughts and our own emotions. I mean, there are stressful events in our life, and mm -hmm. that's not going to change in our lifetime. But the thing that is so uh, important in the whole thing is not the stress that we're encountering. It's how we're internally responding. If we were all fully awake and fully enlightened, we'd be able to recognize the stuff that, okay, it's a big deal, but, you know, I don't want to lose any sleep over it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and if you actually have just a spectacular reaction, non-reaction, to the stress, you don't trigger the biology. Mm -hmm. But if you're sitting there worrying about cash flow and how your relationships are doing and your thoughts are elsewhere, that's very, that's very challenging to the human body and it elicits the exact same stress response. So the key to the highway in all of this work is understanding your own mind and your own emotions enough that you disengage the biology of the stress response from the stressful events, external or internal, that you encounter. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. That's really what this is about.